That is fucking oh, horrible. Man. God damn it. But what is that? <laughs> We're back, guys. Even with that horrible... That's not even a golf clap yet. That's, that's a horrible golf clap, too. <laughs> Matt Chat Podcast. I, I gotta be honest, I've never been known to be a good clapper. Yeah. They need you for that commercial <laughs> with the old people. You know, clap on, clap off. <laughs> that's where they need you. We'll have a red version. Except he turns, <laughs> a red he turns his lights off. And guys, don't be confused with myself and Chris because I'm, I'm repping the red today. See if you can like, tell where my face is. It's right? almost like it's almost like camouflage. You can't even tell. There's no there's no way. The only the only thing you can tell that you can tell who Frank is, but you couldn't tell who. That's well, because, we had to put Frank as a buffer in between the rest yes, because Otherwise I have great skin one tone red. and great hair, exactly. so it's very uh, exactly. So guys, we're back. Matt Chad podcast with myself, Paul Seattle, Cuzzy Frank Seattle, yes sir, Christopher Shea, and producer extraordinaire Peter Oberk. So um, great topic matter today, guys. So. We're going to revisit one of our favorite topics, and that is the horrible, mediocre culture of New Fairfield. <laughs> so um, the F New Fairfield, Fairfield. yeah. So topic. basically, basically <laughs> um, and in a, on a serious note, not that we don't mean that because I do. Um, we had a situation happen this week that on a very it's like the gods <laughs> and the, the, the clouds opened oh, up, the, the skies came down. It was yeah. such a great. It was such a great feeling, I have to be honest. And that's, uh, thank you, because that's a perfect, perfect way to describe it. God I, looked down on us. On us, on us, actually. <laughs> and it, it warmed my heart. It really I'm not did. even kidding. When I say this, I mean it. Um, we're not going to talk about wrestling today, but it has to do with a, a little bit. But it's, it's, it has to do with a coach who was the wrestling coach there at New Fairfield, TJ Silva, who coached our boys. Not just a wrestling coach. He was a dear friend. The kid would come over for... He would stop by our house for Christmas. He'd have some dessert. We'd get him gifts. I mean, he was instrumental as far as my older sons helping them out. I mean, literally, he was the guy who came to my house all the time to give them privates, to help them out, to take them to tournaments when I couldn't go there. So here's a guy that was really legitimately part of our family. And I just want to add to that that... He definitely had an influence on, on my youngest pal. No and question. And even Justin. Absolutely. And to the point where he moved on to bigger and better things because that's what he is. He's a real a real coach. Yeah. The wrestling part of it is just part of it, but he's a real coach. Last year at the state tournament, Paolo had no one to coach him because everyone was spread everywhere. Right. TJ, TJ Silva jumped in and coached Paolo, and, as, and it was like they never, like he had never left. It's like, like he, he never, never left. left. Like he never left. And it was just a wonderful thing to say. So to add to what you're talking about, that's just how he operates. Yeah. But more importantly, why are we so happy? Why are we like elated for him? And why are we like, we're going, we were right again. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So the point being is that TJ Silva was run out of New Fairfield. But hold on. Let's, yeah. let's give a little backstory Go first. Go ahead. Okay. TJ Silva ran the youth program. Correct. Essentially. That's even better. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he took the youth wrestlers from... Some good, some mediocre, some bad, to very good. Correct. And I have to be honest, it was P uh, TJ's laurels that got New Fairfield to win the Open. Yes. It was all of his wrestlers that he and what year was that? What year was that? That was two years 2016, ago? 2016, 2000. Two or three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was 2016. Right. Yeah, probably 2016 or 2015. But in any event, all his guys came up into the high school program, and let's be honest, they kicked butt. Did they get better when they were in a high school program? Perhaps. I don't know. I wasn't part of it. I didn't really see much. But I can say this much. Every one of TJ's wrestlers that went into the high school program produced. Correct. Period. Correct. Okay. That's the backstory. So now it was only natural for, for uh, TJ to potentially either become a head coach there, become an assistant coach, coach. there, or become and do something at with the, the new Fairfield level. program at the high school level. High school level. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You can go from here. Um, so the main issue here is like what Chris said is he nurtured and grew that youth program, okay? Even to the point where when you and I had stepped away from it and we were doing our own things, we still were attached to him. And it was 30, and, 40 strong. Yeah, yes, there was exactly. a huge exactly. program. And there was actually athletes, not the Island of Misfit Toys that it is now. But the point being is, is that um, at the end of the day, because of that connection and his vision to say, how do I build these youth athletes so they will be the future of the team? This is what needs to be done. Okay? And when that happened, there's an old saying, and again, I'm speculating here, but having had some experience with the coach there and 
the and, and, and administration and the, support, and the supporting so, and, and, and the people that were there at the time. The minute that a sh that the sh that the star shines brighter than the larger star, they become a threat. That star became a threat, and I say that's what happened to T.J. Silva. He became a threat because those kids, those athletes, were his athletes. Those Absolutely. wrestlers were his wrestlers. They were connected to him. So when that and he even got acknowledged when they won the open. They right. even said they were thanking. They made listen. They were. I'm sure they were thanking the high school coach as well. But they were also thanking Coach T.J. For sure. Of course. Well, he was the coach. Correct. He was the legitimate coach. He was the guy, even when he wasn't being invited. I remember when he was going to the high school matches, and he was going there professionally in a shirt and tie, yep. and he was getting involved and in how animated and how engaged he was with the, with the wrestlers, and he was officially nothing. He was there on his own time, not being paid. He was there because those were his wrestlers. Those were his kids. Yeah. You know? Go ahead. No, I, I, was, I was just going to agree with you 100%. He was only there just for the love of the sport Correct. and for the love of the kids. Correct. And that speaks volumes about his character. That's right. In my opinion. And the work ethic is the other part about it. Like a lot of these guys, you want to be coaches. You're not, if you're coaching 10 sports, you're not a real coach. I don't care if you're the varsity coach of one sport right. and you coach all the other sports. If you're the varsity coach of a sport, you're coaching that sport all year round. Yep. Period. And that's what TJ Silva is. And anyone that's successful is, okay, in any varsity sport, particularly wrestling we're talking about today. So to fast forward a little bit, as his, sh as his star started to shine brighter, okay, he became a threat because they didn't want that. None of them did from the head. But, and, and I bet they also felt pressure that here he was going to come in and steal some cushy jobs that maybe some of the old regime, if you will, or the current regime was just very comfortable just being there. Well, if you remember, TJ was so passionate at the time when you and I were slightly involved still, he removed the coach. Yeah, because, right. yeah, he removed the coach, you know. Because he, he wasn't following because the philosophy. Because he wasn't following the philosophy. He wasn't part of the culture. And, and TJ basically said to him point blank, we don't come back. We don't need you here. That's not how we operate. We keep score. We choose winners. We compete. That's wrestling. Correct. So I don't know what it is you think 100%, you're doing here. 100%. 100%. You know, and... The, and, and the ironic part about it is that that person is now there. Yeah. And That's, TJ's not. And TJ's not. And the program is horrible. Is, I, I don't even know if they're ranked mm -hmm. in the top 20 or 30 in the state. Maybe. Correct. And, and, only, and only three years ago, they, were, they, they, they had they won, won the, the Opens. Yeah. They won the Ems, right? No, they won the Opens. They, the they opens. didn't just win the Ems. They won the Opens. opens. So right. what's the deeper question here is why is your beloved town of New Fairfield like this? Is there something in the water? They embrace mediocrity. They don't, listen, I've said it a thousand times. You have two coaches in that town. You have the varsity, lax, the varsity lacrosse coach and you have the varsity baseball coach. Those guys are engaged all year round. They get, they're getting their guys ready all year round. They're taking them to all of the better places to get better. They're getting them stronger. They're taking them to better competitions. They're doing everything they need to get them better because that's why they're successful. It's a cult. And that's how you be, breed, build a program. That's as how well. you build a program. So, and why do you think that's happening on the baseball and the lacrosse level, but it's not happening on the football and the wrestling? And what, where do you think the blockage? It's the coach. It's the, it's the coaches. You know, take my. Take my it's, take, listen, yeah. it's always the coaches. It's always the coaches. Yeah. Take, it's always the coaches. Take my, my own personal issues with coaches there, because it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the culture of that coach. A real coach knows what he has to do to be successful. He doesn't, and then is willing to do it. Because yeah. I believe I believe those coaches know what they have to do. Oh yeah, they're just not willing to no. do it. They're lazy and they're there for yeah. money half the time. They're not there. You know, they want to look cool. It's a very small paradigm. Oh, look, I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. But I have one moniker. I'm the varsity coach of one sport. Big deal. But how successful are you? Yeah. You know, it's 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 as simple as guess what? When you look at what T.J. Silva's done. Where he's gone to Simsbury in three years. This is not, now. This this, this is, is this is like the news yeah, flash. This, this is, is the alert. Mm. Okay. This is the reason we're doing this entire uh, podcast okay. is for what he's about to say okay. right now. TJ. So they got rid of TJ. Yeah, yeah. So he decided to say, "Okay, fine. I'm going to go. I love wrestling. I'm going to go do it someplace else." Right. And basically, he's offered a varsity job at Simsbury. He's there three years. He three takes three years. years. That's it. He takes the program to number two in, in the state. In, in, in the state in three years, and, and they started off at number ten. Came in, he was. They weren't even top ten. Oh yeah, okay. They became his first year. They make the top ten. 
His second year, they're top eight. His third year, number six to number two. So he moved up the pylon twice. Crazy. Okay. Now, why did that happen? Why? He's a wrestling coach. He coaches wrestling all year. He went up to Simsbury. He took control of the youth program. There it is. Okay? That's the key he right there. He control, took control of the youth program and, and started his feeder program yes. to, to make his high school program better. Took control of the youth program and also created a relationship with Fisheye Wrestling Club, which is another great which is, wrestling which club. Which is an elite wrestling, wrestling club, club right in the area yeah. which he draws from. And they, and they have, and they they have, have a relationship. They have an relationship, okay? So... They train together. So what do That's they do? That's just smart business, <clears throat> smart coaching. Smart coaching. Period. So you want to know how? That's how. Just exactly what you're saying. You don't have that in New Fairfield. Yeah. And here's a gentleman who deserves it. Exactly. Here's a guy who doesn't have a kid in the program. He's not even married. Doesn't have a kid. Exactly. He just wants to do this He's for the sake of being a good coach yeah, and influencing shit. kids. That's right. He gives a shit, he gives man. A shit. He goes above and beyond. No doubt. It, says, it says, too, by how he's approaching it. I mean... Look, one of the biggest issues that we had in the Milford, I remember, especially with the football teams, where we were trying to tell people you got to get them involved young because there's just too much to play catch up on once they get to college or high school, rather. And this guy sees it. You know, he's he's getting them to do the basics and, and get a taste for wrestling. This way, when they hit the mats at high school, he can focus on more complex things. He can push them a little bit harder. I mean, that's that's going to make a difference. I mean, he gives a shit. It's clear. It's real, and it's really nice to see a good guy like this become successful. Sure. Right? And the, and the proof is in the pudding. He's number two. So every one of those naysayers who got rid of him in New Fairfield, shame on you. That's right. Shame on you. That's right. But you know what's really <laughs> a shame is it's the kids who suffer. Do you know what I mean? I am. Um, and, 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 and here's what's happening. Because TJ's going to go do his own thing elsewhere and be successful. You know, he's going to get it done, especially the approach he takes. But these kids in New, New Fairfield who are maybe trying to do something with wrestling or trying Absolutely. to use wrestling as a, as a, a springboard of football. There's nothing to do there. I was here Sunday, <clears throat> and I was I was training, and there's a gentleman whose son is on the wrestling team in New Fairfield, and we were talking, and I was basically going off. I'm like, I'm glad, good, I'm glad he came there and kicked the crap out of everyone, kicked the crap out of New Fairfield. And he did it in New Fairfield. And he did it in New Fairfield, right? <laughs> the pitch like, just warmed my heart. It yeah. was the whole point, you know. And he said something to me. It was so, it was so powerful. He said to me, he said, Paul, he goes, my wife turned to me and said, look at TJ with those kids. He goes, look at that unit. He goes, look at them. He goes, even when they were taking the picture, he goes, they are so dialed into one another as a team. We don't have that. Our kids, and then he said, we're looking at our kids, and we're going, look this one, too. who's fooling around? Who looks like they're half asleep? You know, no one's engaged. No, and, he, and to put it bluntly, he said, they could care less. Thank you, Carol. So that's what you did. So you basically knew Fairfield, okay? And it goes again to administration, the athletic director, who's, I'll be quiet about it for now, you know, allows that to happen because when you don't know and you think you do, this is what happens because you don't know, all right? You don't know. When you don't know specific sports, and that goes for any AD or administration, listen, there's specific sports we don't know about. Of course. I'm particularly not going to go and say, well, I know how to make you win at them. It doesn't work that way. Okay, but when you take someone that is going to plant the culture there, okay, and recruit and train and, and make wrestling His something priority. in the town, in the yeah. priority, that's what you get. So what happens is he gets basically removed. Pushed out. Pushed out. Pushed, out. pushed out. Let's be honest. He, he got, got pushed, pushed out. out. He got pushed out. And then Against goes, his will. Exactly, because he didn't want to go. He did not want to go. He did not want to go. He got pushed out. Then he goes an hour and change away, Simsbury, right yep. from, from there. Yeah. And look what happens. So what do you do? So who's, what, who's, whose fault is it now that you keep, that you made one of your programs another Worse. one, another one lackluster? I mean, so that's, that's my point. So, like, it's the disease of that, of that, of that town. And, and, he's, and he's from New Fairfield. Yeah. He went to the New Fairfield alumni. program. Exactly. It's like, well, that's what they do. You can't, there's only, the baseball coach is New Fairfield alumni. The lacrosse coach is New Fairfield alumni. Okay. So I guess those are the, the two, how do you say, it's the two uh, exceptions? Yeah. yeah they're the two, two exceptions that were allowed to stay. And listen, they get it. I know those two personally. They're great coaches, and they don't care. They're going to do what it takes to make sure to that be, it's a winning be successful. program. Okay? 
And the reality of it is, it seems everything else doesn't, everything else takes a back seat. Especially the sport of wrestling, because hey, not everyone can wrestle. Because if, if you're not only, tough, you can't wrestle. Only a couple years ago, they were at the pinnacle. Well, that pinnacle is because of TJ, and, though. No, that's Let's the point. That, yeah. That's the point. That pinnacle is because of TJ Silva's work. Nobody else there. Nobody else. Because if that was the case, your kids wouldn't have been pulled out of the fair. Well, here's the other thing, and then and then th let's take it to the next step. Now, what's happened because the program has become so lackluster? Correct. The good kids aren't even going there. No. And the good it. kids, and, and and more importantly, the good kids not only not going there for the youth program, they don't even want to be there for the high school, school program, program. Correct. Which is really a travesty. Correct. Because now these these parents have to either pay more money or they've got to take their kids and they got to inconvenience themselves because they know there's not going to be a program for their kids to excel at because there's no culture. Well, there's no culture for wrestling in the town. And again, you've got, you know, again, and I'm going to say this because I am biased, but it's the truth. Not everyone can wrestle. Can't. It's a combat sport. You're signing your kid to go fight another kid. Period. But, but where rules. did it fall off? Because the Milford had a good. I mean, New Fairfield had a good oh, it wrestling off, it fell off culture. For years. It fell off for years. It, was, it it's fell off ten years ago. It fell yeah. off. I'm gonna tell you, I just he'll, he'll it know better. Fell I off. Well, if to, to, it, there's two you know, times. When I graduated two in 2002. Times it fell off. I mean, they had a great program. They had they had a very similar coach, but it was the, the feeder program was exceptional. Exceptional. Correct. It was exceptional. Mm -hmm. TJ was part of it because when he graduated from high school, he got involved in the feeder program. There were other people who were instrumental in, in helping the feeder program um, be successful as well. But the bottom line is, most recently, when TJ left and the feeder program came out to it, I think there's maybe like eight, ten guys in the feeder program now. The, 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 the numbers are dismal. I'm just probably more than 18 guys. I have no idea because I don't go there. But I'm just saying, my son Avery came back from school to help out, and he says, Dad, the numbers are dismal. He says, and the kids there are just starting to learn how to wrestle. Yeah. So New Fairfield's going to have a long way to go. If at all. Before they, yeah, before they'll they get be back. They'll be co-op. Yeah. They they're not going to numbers because it's a lacrosse town. And go what? And as much. You again. might be very right. They yeah. may be co-op co very soon because there's not going to be enough guys because to Because not team. everyone can wrestle. That's the point. You know, that's the first thing. The second thing is, when you're in a different culture, you know, and lacrosse isn't my cup of tea, but I respect the hell out of what they're doing there. I respect the hell out of what the coach has done there, because he's a winner. And I don't care if it was a ping pong team. I'd say the same thing. Well, if it was a ping point. pong team, I'd probably be yeah, helping out in that. some respect. You're good, you're good with that. I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> but on, on a serious note, that's what it's about. It's about the culture. But it seems like... It's the good old boy system there, and it's this and it's that. But you don't want to win at everything. You're okay with winning at one or two things. And I can tell you this much, that the minute that those two programs aren't allowed to do what they want to do to make them successful, those guys will leave too. It's, it could be because, you know what, you can't be put, you can't have handcuffs put on you when you know what the blueprint is to make a winning culture and program. So the reality of it is, and I, I mentioned this earlier in the, in the podcast, is that you push T.J. Silva out and you embrace the guy who he told to leave. Yeah. And, now, of, and now look at the program. And now look at the program. You know, and now look at the program. So it's, it, it's, it's an oxymoron. I, you, it's the bizarro world. I say that a lot. Yeah. But those are the facts. That, that's what's going on. But most importantly, it's, such a, it, it's so awesome for him. I just, I can't say it. You know, we're going to have him here as a guest. Cannot wait. Okay. Cannot wait. Because when you guys yeah. all see him, you'll understand and see his true passion. Exactly. For you know, kids. He couldn't make kids. it down here today. So we doing like the prequel today to when he comes down next time. When he comes down for the next one. How do you think the actual wrestling coach or the head coach feels about what you're saying? I mean, He doesn't I, like it. He could sit here. I've dealt with that man. I know exactly what he's about. But what would okay. he say? I mean, I, he I mean, wouldn't say it. He'd, he'd give the politically correct answer. I'm happy for him. Bullshit. You're not happy for anything. You exist. You've allowed the you've allowed that program, whatever you want to call it, to 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 spin down the drain. Okay, you invite the wrong people in to run the program. I actually think he's gonna say he's happy. You wanna know why? Because he's on his way out. He's kind of he's yeah, punches no. pilot. He's washed his yeah. hands. He's basically done. He's got his one cool accolade of being the open champions and he he sees the future unfortunately of the program. So trust me when I tell you. He's dishing that program off to somebody else. He's dishing it off to somebody else, and we'll see what that other person can do with it. Because I can tell you right now, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know if they want to duel me this year. 
All I know is this, okay? Three of the best wrestlers in New England live in the town in Fairfield, okay? For years now. They won't breathe near that, that school team. They left it as youths. One is getting ready to go somewhere in high school. The other two are getting ready for that as well in the next year or two. That's unfortunate. And, and it's not even on the radar, okay? And that's the greater question that you should ask. That's the greater question that those people that run the athletics there should say, how is it we can't even keep the athletes that live in our town? That's a, te that's a testament. 100%. That's a testament. How? How is it we can't? Because you're not giving them what they need. That's why. You're in the CIAC, which is a weak conference. You're in the M's, which is even weak. Okay? The teams you compete against are weak. And as far as wrestling is concerned, you can't beat them. And in football, you barely beat them. Okay? So the reality of it is, when you know, when you can follow models of the FCX schools and the double L's and the L schools that actually compete against real teams and what it takes to be successful, be ranked one, two, or three in conferences, no matter what the sport, okay, no matter what the size of your school is, it's about the culture, okay? It's about the culture and what's necessary to win and be successful. And then when kids look at their coach and they're just enamored by his presence or her presence because of the energy they bring, knowing that they're coaching wrestling all year round. They're coaching lacrosse all year round. They're coaching baseball all year round. That's what it's about. That's why those guys succeed. That's why the other ones fail because they're not. They look for money. They want to be big shots, big fish in a very small pond. But guess what? Your resume suck because you don't perform. And then you're in the bizarro. And world. I gotta wonder if they even care. They don't care. I, I hate no, to say that. they I don't have, care. To, That's the biggest thing. You know, I, I see glimpses of like hope. And then I just see periods of darkness. Oh, yes. And I mean, eventually, I'm one of the parents who's trying to find this kid to go to prep school because I don't like the program there, and I have to be honest. Well, if we're going to have about this, not only the program, you all run your mouths over there in New Fairfield <laughs> about your school. Academically, you're ranked 91st in the state. Okay? How do you like them apples? 91st in the state, on top of the fact that you suck at sports. Period. What are you so giving? Yeah, what so, are you giving so what are you giving? So what? So what what's is the it? incentive? What's for the me incentive to, go there? to stay there? Tell me, what's the incentive? You're ranked 91st in the state. Your administration runs their mouths about, oh, we're about academics. Well, you know what? You suck at that, obviously. Okay. Your sports programs are anomalies when they are successful, for the exception of two. Right. Okay. So tell me, what what are you selling there? Tell me what you're selling. You get to go to a school that looks like a castle. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You're right. And, and, hey, yeah, we yeah. do have a really nice view hey, from our football, football field. field. Exactly. That that is. So tell me what you sell. Tell me what you're selling. Because having having dealt with administration on other on other issues, you learn they're full of shit. Period. On all of it, good old boy system. They push the push the good out and embrace the bad and allow the bad to continue to do things. Okay, but that's also at. An educational level, because we know in New Fairfield what's happened with one of the teachers, yeah. was allowed to stay there with inappropriate behavior. So do me a favor. When you see people like the TJ Silvers of the world come along, you embrace them. They're you a do beacon whatever it takes, takes to keep them there. They're the beacons because they're going to change stuff. Yeah, they're the beacons of light of success there. Yeah. That's what it's about. So at the end of the day, do me a favor. If it, you could put lipstick on a pig, <laughs> but guess what? It's still a pig. It may kiss better, though. A little bit. There's no doubt about that. You know? There's a teaser. I like bacon kisses. <laughs> bacon kisses are they good. They probably taste good. I like bacon they kisses, taste too. Good. I ain't gonna lie. Bacon makes everything just a little bit better. I, like I bet if they sprinkled bacon on all the wrestlers in New Fairfield, they would just wrestle better. Because <laughs> bacon makes things better. But then you'd have some cannibalism going on. <laughs> the wrestlers are biting well, each Well, think other. about it. If you, if you tie up and all of a sudden you start smelling bacon, you're like, wow. And the next thing you know, you're on your back because you freaking, you know, so. You better not go to deliverance country. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> Signs of lambs, too, exactly, you know. Um, but it's, it, again, you know, and you, and you having the most experiences with high schools and, and whatnot, you saw it firsthand. You, it's why you ran from New Fairfield. It's why I, you I hate ran. to say it, you I ran. ran. I'm still running, running, and if everything goes well, well fingers crossed, well, toes crossed, arms crossed, eyes crossed, I'm going to keep on running. running. 
That's all I can say. I've got my, I, we're, we're, I'm trying to work out something for my son. Everything goes well. We will be, we will be far away from New Fairfield as we possibly can. And I hate to say that, but that's just the way it is. That's the reality, and I call it like I see it. Well, you want to... <laughs> well, I wouldn't wanna. have a problem with them either. <laughs> either. I wouldn't have a problem with them either. But my, and I love Coach Peel. Peel Coach, Coach Peel's, Peel's great. The best. Yes, Phenomenal. Let me great. tell you, you want to talk about someone, again, who did... He, he's, a, he's a TJ Silva. But he is. Let me tell you some other guy. He would stay after 30 minutes with a wife pregnant at home, a kid uh, already, 30 extra minutes just doing arm drags to try to make me better because it was a first-time wrestler. And that's the difference maker. When you get a coach who gives a shit... Like TJ, like Coach Peel, you're going to see leaps and bounds. But it sucks when the people that hire them or or, or, or they work for are working against them. Yeah. And it's a damn sh it's a damn shame for the coaches. Yeah. It's a damn shame for the school. And it's really a yeah. damn shame for the kids. For the, for the Here's what I, when I absolutely Coach Peel's is a, is a, is just he's he's aces. And Coach Peel having Coach my, our sons at, at the club level. Okay. <laughs> At the high, high school, school level, level, when the own co when the, when the New Fairfield coaches wouldn't go to certain tournaments, Peel would coach my kids. Yep. There you go. And at, at the national level, there you go. And at the and at the salt at the, of the earth, and the, man. He's the salt of the earth. And at club youth level, he said something to me. And like, I don't forget stuff like that. And he said something to me a year and a half, two years ago, and he said something. He goes, "How do I get?" One, two, and three to New Fairfield. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to New Milford, excuse right. me. Because how do I get them to there? And, and that's and he's looking at these kids and going, that's my future yeah. if I could get them to me. Yes. And here's a guy that's looking at them, you know. I'm trying, yeah, Coach Peel. Yeah, and I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he's look, he looked at us then. And, and you know, but at the same time, I was at New Fairfield. What was the meeting? Four years ago? When I sat there with the AD and the wrestling coach. And I said, what are you going to do? And what do they do? They do nothing. They cower. You got the AD who, oh, she knew wrestling. You didn't know shit about wrestling. Just like anything else. <laughs> Seriously. It's like asking me about ping pong. I know nothing right. about it. All right? So guess what? Same thing. And I pose the same questions then. You've got some of the best wrestlers in New England here in your town. And what are you doing for them? Nothing. Nothing. And you continue to do nothing. Just pulled in the more negative energy, the wrong coaches, and everything else. Okay? And again, at the end of the day, the shining star of this whole podcast is the success of TJ Silva. And what he did... TJ! TJ! What he did when he was pushed out of that town. No, not what he did when he was pushed out. What he was able to, to do, do when he got rid of all the nastiness yeah. that New Fairfield brings on. That's it. And when you finally get in a town where they support their coaches and they want to be winners, you get... And, then, and, you, and you couple that with a TJ Silva... And you get a championship team. So to wrap it up, do you guys recommend uh, people move to New Fairfield to start out their journey in married life? No. N not unless you plan on sending your kids to New Milford while you're living. <laughs> <laughs> then yes. Yeah. I, I will say this to give you an honest answer. If I knew what I knew, I would never move there. I've said it. I think I've said it before on podcasts. I, that's going to be my answer to that. If I know... It's a real small town with yeah. small town mentality Always. and everybody's involved in everybody's business. Yeah. And I don't like it. If I... Exactly. If I had, if I know what I knew now, I would have never moved there, never, you know. But at the end of the day, man, hey, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Go Green Wave. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the shirt on. I yeah, know, I with the matching colors. Yeah, exactly, you know. exactly. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna wrap this up. Match Chat Podcast. Myself, Paul Seattle, Frank Seattle, Christopher Shea, Peter Oberk. We will see you next time. Shoot the devil. <laughs> <laughs>